Hey everybody, Mark Zachary with uh, Real Estate Pros of Houston, but we have a, a, a unique situation today. We have a, a, a guest by the name of Holly Bittick, and I, I hope I pronounced that right. If not, she can uh, correct me in, in a minute, but uh, we're uh, glad to have her. She is a rock star of a, a real estate agent, does some business here in Houston, but also uh, does her, uh, the majority, I guess, of, of her work in the uh, Dallas area. So even though this podcast is Real Estate Pros of Houston, she is a pro in Houston and Dallas. So uh, it's it's great to have her uh, on the uh, podcast. And Holly, introduce yourself. And uh, we just uh, thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us today. And and uh, you'll be shocked at how fast 30 to 40 minutes goes. So uh, we'll, but we'll try to keep it about 45 minutes or so. But thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thanks, Mark. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for Mark. the invite to do this. I'm excited. So yeah, it's a it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. We'll uh, up, upload the video to to YouTube. You can share it out with uh, all of your social media sites and things like that. And and uh, hopefully it'll help you get some exposure. It'll, it'll certainly help you get some exposure uh, down here in the Houston area as well because we yeah. put it out out on all of our sites. Uh, so. Anyway, so I always like to uh, lead off uh, the podcast with the uh, with the best question ever, and it is, you know, Holly, tell me your story. How how did you end up in the real estate business? Where are you from? How long have you been doing this? Kind of tell us your story, not just on the business side of things, but but the personal uh, part of the story. And then I'm going to ask a few questions as we go based on what you have to say in your story. Okay. Well, it kind of blows some people's minds. I mean, I, um, I started out, uh, needing an apartment back in 1988, uh, because I had, you know, needed to get out from, from the house and I became a, uh, a leasing agent for an apartment community. Okay. And, uh, within a year I became a manager. Um, so I was a manager before I was 19, uh, and then I elevated at 27 years old to a director of marketing and training. And then, um, I have spent pretty much, you know, as a director of operations for a developer, um, and mixed use developments and high rise buildings over here in Dallas. So I, I had a very lucrative 30 year career in property management. And so I originally got my real estate license in the nineties, back before it was all electronic, back before there were computers, uh, back before there was anything like that. So I remember taking you on a Scantron, doing the whole, you know, <laughs> whole thing yeah. like that, like, whoa, yeah. okay. And I remember being the second person to get up from the big group at the UTA uh, testing center. And I thought, oh my gosh, I, I went through this test so quickly. I, I don't know, but then I thought, I got to stick with my gut. I'm getting it. And I passed my real estate exam. So I was only 23 at the time when I passed the real estate exam. And then wow. I continued to, uh, I did a little bit of an apartment locating back in the day in the nineties and then continued my, you know, career in property management. Um, that love doing that. So I, um, ended up in 2015, uh, I, got my real estate license activated again and then still didn't really sell real estate or do that. I still was in property management um, mm -hmm. because, you know, it's scary. It's scary to be like, okay, I've got this big salary in, in my business and property management right. um, property management companies will not let you have an active license um, in multifamily uh, because they think that you're going to basically try to like uh, do some, you know, yeah business with the current customers they have living there so they don't want yeah. you to have an actor and uh so my husband's in a band and there's a story to this my husband's a drummer in a band is that he, right yeah he is he is uh, you just gave me a whole new avenue to go down here in a few minutes so he's right here he's okay awesome, awesome drummer so he's, wow. in a, he's in a band a successful band that's a tribute to the band the eagles which you know Oh yeah. In the 70s and 80s, like I did, born in 1970. You know, yeah. you know all this music. So um the lead singer, who is uh basically the Glenn Fry of the band, 
um, his wife is a real estate agent. And so as the wives, as we call ourselves Desperitas to the Desperados, is the name of the band <laughs> Desperado, um, she, she kept asking me for like a year, um, Holly, you need to come, you know, work with my broker who's in Houston, um, you know, and uh, you're, you're going to, you're going to just, you know, kill it in this market or whatever and, and, and do what you need to do. And so I was scared at first to, to leave my salary. Um, mm -hmm. But then I decided that um, after Texas had the ice storm and I ended up doing contract work for a property for six months, that was, it, it was just brutal for me. And I said, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to commit. And yeah. my husband um, was finally on board with me going straight commission. And I'm like, can you float us for a little bit? You know, I yeah. mean, you know, get some more gigs with Desperado. Let's, let's get this going because I don't want to go back. And so I ended up um, joining with, uh, at first, I didn't join with her. I joined with Dallas Luxury Realty. And I basically had to do everything myself. I mean, my story is really a... Um, for a newbie agent, not having a website, not having a CRM, not having any leads, having to do everything myself, I used my 30 year business experience in graphic artists and social media experience. I'm also a certified social media uh, manager okay. um, to be able to generate for my business. So the first thing I did was I loaded up my social media um, as a realtor and um, at first it became, um, sleek spaces, Dallas. And then I changed it to, uh, explore living Dallas. So okay. I basically hustled to get all of my leads from social media and that's what I did. And so I, um, sold my first house, uh, by somebody wanting an apartment, uh, for like $1,600 a month. And I'm like, that's not even, I mean, uh, wanting a house for $1,600 a month. I'm like, you can't get a house in Dallas for $1,600 a month. Yeah. Or if um, you can, you don't want to live there, right? right? You don't want to live there. So, I mean, and so it turned out that he he's a fireman and I'm like, you know, just on my own experience, I'm like, is I, I'm like, do you not realize that there are loans out there for you as a veteran, as a fireman? And, you know, you could get a house. And I just started working it that way. And next thing you know, he became my very first client uh, to sell yeah. a house to over here in Royce City. So then my friend, Samantha, that uh, got me to join her brokerage because I wasn't having any luck with my other one. Um, I joined her with her. And so they have a, a national um, home rental company that's a client. And I thought, well, how perfect is this? My background's yeah. property management. I yeah. totally know their business, so I can really work for this client and, and do that. So, of course, this begins in January of 2022. So it's only been a year Yeah. to the day, right? Almost a little, little yeah. over. Yeah, exactly. I start writing um, offers for this for this buyer. And, and again, I know that the investors were going a little crazy in the market, um, but this investor, you know, as a home rental company, you know, you have, you have specific things that you need to look out for. There can't be any HOA restrictions. They're not going to, you know, overbid like everybody else was. They're not going to overbid by 30,000, 40,000, $50,000 because they need to make a return on their investment. So, right. you know, at the end of the day, as a buyer's rep in a seller's market, I had to sell myself. And that's what it did. I mean, I would text these agents with cute pictures of my sheepdogs. <laughs> I am the ultimate agent to work with. You want to work with me? This is great. Yeah. I I responded to people. I was very um, active in taking people's phone calls. I whereas I noticed the trend last year was that so many different agents got on board. You know, getting their license. They would get these listings, you know, just like crazy, but then they would disappear. You couldn't get a hold of them. You just can't yes. get a hold of anybody or they were not nice or they were screaming at other agents. And I'm just like, wow, yeah. that's amazing that you're having to do that. And I'm so sorry. And so what I did was that I used my personality. I used my strong work ethic. I used my communication skills 
And I proved to them that um, that even though my offer may be lower than the other one, at the end of the day, you need to look at the big picture. You need to look at the clothes. Can it's we get close. from A to Z and get this closed with with minimal problems or zero problems? Um, am I going to be? I mean, I would literally, if there was an amendment, I would have the amendment to them within two minutes. Um, if I had to do a price negotiation, I was kind, I was respectful, I was mm -hmm. understanding. You use these listening skills um, to be able to to work with people. There is a way to be able to communicate. Uh, to people. It's not your way. It's their way. I mean, and I've learned this through 30 years of, of, of leading teams in property management and training teams. Right. I mean, um, and that's what's going to get the deal. And that's what got me all these deals. And I was closing um, 20 deals a month between um, and, and in the beginning in Dallas. Well, then this buyer decided that they hadn't been in the Houston market in probably three years. So they decided to put me over the Houston market and start working Houston. So okay. I started writing offers come March in Houston and I developed relationships with a lot of agents that when um, literally the deal would go so smooth and the communication was so good that these agents would start sending me like off market listings to present yeah. um, and they would just keep uh, communicating with me because the recurring theme was Holly, you're so nice. You're so um, on top of it. You're a great communicator. I didn't have to worry about it. Um, and I write all my own offers. I mean, I don't have a, an assistant. So I was doing 20 deals a month, at least plus that were an escrow plus writing probably 50 offers a month for this buyer all oh my myself gosh. and i wrote everything myself and that was what i think stood out was because i oversaw every aspect of that i wasn't passing it off to somebody else not that that's mm -hmm. a bad thing there are agents out there that feel more comfortable doing that i personally feel comfortable doing it myself then i know it's right i don't have to you know go back and worry about any problems because it's a contract and i've dealt with contracts my entire life uh -huh. this is just a different contract so all the while of doing this, I was studying um, and I got my accredited buyer's representative uh, certification through um, NAR. And then I got my new home uh, certification through NAR. And I was a member of Reback and I was just constantly um, learning and, you know, progressing and evolving because, you know, despite, yes, 30 years in the business sales is sales i can do this um but at the end of the day uh i wanted to be able to you know keep keep growing and um and so then yeah i mean that's kind of how how that was and um so i just used unique methods to be able to to reach out to agents and i used humor and um, if i didn't get the offer accepted which yeah. there were plenty of it um i would say um, okay, I completely understand. Thank you so much for your consideration. If something should happen, if something should change or fall through, please reach back out to me. And yeah, they were so here. blown away by that. That next thing you know, they would be reaching back out to me. And you know, it's, it, it sounds like you just you do what a lot of them don't. You show up, you do the work, and you do it the right way, and you do business the right way. And uh, I, I heard the other day that. The Houston area, I don't know what it's like in Dallas, but the Houston area has around 50,000 agents. 50% of those did one deal or zero deal deals in the last 12 months. And so that tells you that the reason they're, they're not responding quickly or at all is because they probably have a full-time job doing something else and they don't get off work till five they don't get home till six and then they start responding to you. And, and it's uh it man in, in a business that you're putting the largest transaction of your life in the hands of a part timer blows me away that people would, would do that. Why wouldn't they, you know, use someone like you because you're doing this full time, you, you have done it and you, you do it yourself. 
you don't farm it out. And I, I've interviewed many guys that have teams and that that's okay. It's, yeah. it's their, their model. They, they like it. And, but sometimes that's not your model. So, uh, you know, I think the, the main thing, if you're a realtor, figure out what you want to do and do it, but do it with class and do it with integrity. Like you know, it sounds like you do. I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I have been in situations even in, in property management where I was, I was managing multi-million dollar high rise, you know, with rents up to at the time, $10,000 a month for an apartment in this high rise. At the Man. same time, I'm short staffed. I'm also at the same time working with a developer to open up a brand new property um, in a whole other city. So mm -hmm. I literally um, in that realm, I'm having to, definitely engage time management i'm having to prioritize my day and everything going on with it plus put out fires i mean you know i mean between water breaks and leaks and chaos you know what happening yeah. but, at, but at the end of the day it's like even if you have a full-time job and you're going to do real estate on the side the communication needs to be there and so yeah. um so yeah even if i had a full-time job uh outside of real estate, I would still be communicating, communicating. And and I know that just going from a salaried position like you do to, or you did from that to commission is tough. And there's a lot of people that have to transition from what they were doing, where they were getting a salary to a, a dream that they have to own their own business and be a, a realtor. I, I get that. And so when you when you have to do that, you have to figure out how do I how can I communicate effectively during this transaction? Because people like mortgage guys, inspectors, they can't wait till you get off of work to right. be able to do what they they do. And so uh, I know you got to figure it out, but you uh, you certainly figured it out pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, I had I, I had agents that literally um, would not respond, or they were shut. They shut their phones off at five o'clock, which I don't do. I've never done that. I've always been, in, even in property management, as a as a uh, manager or what have you. I was on call twenty four seven. Saturday, Sundays didn't matter. So mm -hmm. uh, I answered my phone, and you know, and so I think that because the market was so crazy the way that it was um a lot of people jumped on board thinking oh this is real estate i'm going to get my license this is going to be easy you know easy morning. fall fall right you know right there i mean it wasn't easy for buyers reps first of all because that's what i was i i was a listing agent for one home <laughs> last year so, um, okay. for everything. before it's i fine. forget the question what was the most um the most offers you made for a buyer over the last 12 to 18 months, because I know it's kind of slowed down in the last six, but did, I've heard some crazy numbers that I wrote 30 offers. I, I wrote 35 offer this for this one person and to, and walk me through that number and how long it takes to actually put all that together for just one offer. Well, for one offer for um, basically with my with my corporate buyer um, that I probably in the last, tw say, 12 to 18 months, I mean, I've written probably over 400 offers. <laughs> mm. My gosh. Right. Um, it's it's crazy. Um, but uh, in the come November, everything stopped because the interest rates rose so so greatly you know over so seven percent, you're just like oh my god so everybody was scared and everybody was waiting and doing that so you know my buyer shut down my people shut down i i started to have um people in dallas come to me for rentals um i normally don't do rentals unless it's going to be in my quick little area that i live in yeah, um, yeah. because you know i i just don't really mess with rentals and um so so yeah, I mean, probably three to four hundred offers, but in the last since November, I mean, I've written maybe, maybe like twenty five. Okay. 
Okay. And I just closed a deal in Houston last Mon uh, Friday, last Friday. Okay. Just closed okay. a deal in Houston. Um, so, so, so right now it's just kind of getting, you know, creeping back slowly a little yeah. bit. The ironic thing is, I find it sometimes harder to uh, to work with somebody that wants to rent a home than they are to buy a home. But I'm super confident that I mean, I can honestly say that I every person traditional, you know, corporate, what have you, I have, um, they want their home, they're getting their home. And I yeah. tell them, I'm going to, I'm going to get the offer accepted for you. And I have, I've not had for traditional buyers, if they want that home, I've not ever had an offer not accepted. Um, yeah. Just because of your reputation of, of, you know, running a, a good tight ship. And, and I have, um, you know, I have a, uh, a, a place that I'm a part of a group that I'm a part of, it's called peer reputation. And it's for fellow agents to kind of like, uh, rate how it was working with you and, and give kudos and things like that. And also keeps track okay. of all of, your, all of your, um, sales. And so, uh, basically it's like less than only about 8% of agents, like all over, um, are what they call, you know, qualified, you know, as far as reputable agents yeah. uh, that are part of this. So I use that and all of the kudos that I've received from other agents working with other agents that have, they've given me to yeah. be able to help in crafting that offer. So if I and plus the big thing that I heard from a lot of agents was that the offers were written sloppy or yes. that the contracts were not um, written correctly um yeah. so to me it's like i just found that the consistent theme was that agents are not educating themselves they're not understanding you know how important the contract is and the timelines that work with it um so i would get response from listing agents saying you wrote the cleanest offer you're the only one that wrote a clean offer uh, and it was oh everything misspelled and everything was filled out and if it was a blank I acknowledged it and said NA or, you know, um, yeah, and I, I, I I'm shocked at the number of times that I get a call that says, Hey, Mark, what do I put in this box? And what do I check this or that? I'm like, well, what do you, are you not getting the training from your broker or did you not get the training at, I don't say this, I help them, but yeah, you know, I think I thought that was what they covered in, in school. And uh, and certainly with the, with the broker, I mean they ought to they ought to su be supporting and training enough to at least get a, a contract filled out correctly. I mean, right? It, it's definitely for me. It, my broker's in Houston. My broker is a very small brokerage. It's him and it's it's three agents, and one's part time. So, yeah. and I'm one of those three. So we don't have a system like that, which I'm fine with because I chose to work in an environment like that versus some big brokerage, like, you know, yeah. Keller Williams or what have you, which is not, not for everybody. It wasn't for me. Right. And so I had to resource all these training, all the training myself. And I, I, I taught myself and I, I researched and I learned and I went on NAR and I went on Reback and I went, went on every possible, um, platform that I could possibly do to learn how to write a contract. I read the contract. I would read it and be like, okay, let me understand. What does this mean? Um, my uh, friend, Samantha Hart, who's also a realtor who I work with, and she's, you know, the wife of the lead singer of my husband's band. Yeah. She also would help me. I mean, it, it got scary for me at one point. I'll, I'll say the scariest part was when, um, you know, as a buyer's rep, I'm totally schooled and like, yes, I can, I can write an offer. I can get an offer accepted. I, I've got this right. Well, mm -hmm. when I got a client that was referred to me that wanted to also sell their house, I never sold a house before as a listing agent. <laughs> I didn't even have a sign. Okay. I, didn't have, I had no sign, and I'm like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? You know, I'm only like, you know, I can take you to look at houses and buy a house, but I've not sold a house, even though I can sell a house. But I don't. Right. I don't have a sign. I don't have any of that. So what am I doing? I am spending three days putting the most awesome listing presentation together that I could possibly find. And let me tell you, I, I researched a lot about the most awesome listing agent, you know, whether it was Tom Ferry or whether it was anybody yeah, else. Yeah. 
yeah. that I'm going for. Ryan Serhant, you know, I read his books. I've watched Million Dollar Listing since day one. Yeah. Uh, I love it. So, uh, so yeah, I was winging it as a listing agent. Um, and, uh, but so I, got their, I got their home sold without anybody looking at it because, uh, and then we got their dream home on two and almost what was it, three acres of land. Uh, wow. And and she wanted to be able to be able to have goats. She never because she lived in a subdivision. OK. You know, in Forney. And so she wanted to be able to have goats. And ironically enough, the house that she ended up uh, getting, they uh, they had these Nigerian dwarf goats. And so. We were like, they were like, does your, does your buyer want the goats? And I'm like, oh, wow, we get to convey goats in this transaction. <laughs> my thing. mother used to uh, raise goats, so she would love this story. Oh, my God. It was the neatest thing. And so we go to the house and like, here are these goats. And then they're just all like running around. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I, you know, so I bought her a little uh, street sign that said, that said Nigerian Dwarf Drive. So <laughs> put up um over there but again i mean you know that's a prime example of you know i i become i've become a listing agent and a, a buyer's agent all in one and i'm like oh my gosh what am yeah. i gonna do i don't have a sign I, I mean that's i'm just i'm a buyer's rep you know i'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not a listing agent so i i i did the homework and i did what i was gonna do and i went with confidence and went in and said yeah and the reason i could do that too is that i built a home i built a home in the 90s so i went okay. through that experience mm -hmm. um, i own my own home now uh, that i've owned for years um so I, i've just been around it and uh you know so i i just knew what i what i would think that i would uh want you know presented to me yeah. and yeah. then present it in a very colorful graphic design way like i do you know yeah. all that stuff. So I mean, so, so backing up uh, to when you started this, what would you do differently than than you did uh, this go around, or would you do anything differently? Um, Is there well, anything you would change? Definitely, one thing that I would change that that I think um, is that I would get a website. I mean, I am probably one of the only realtors out there that does not have a website. Okay, and that probably would have just helped me um you know be able to have a little i mean although yes i've got a presence out there um that i've done on social media but social media is hard and people have companies that do that uh, for them but i do my own social media i do everything myself um and so i um probably would have would have gotten me a website you know starting starting off and then um been able to also understand in the beginning um just how you know keeping up with everything i mean as a new agent you know they're they're just so uh they're not i just don't think the new agents are trained properly yeah. it's not yeah. to me it's not about going and door knocking on doors and farming um areas where you're sending postcards and stuff like that i mean it's all about you know social media and your online presence and getting out there and meeting people you know in other ways i mean video marketing things like that there's a lot you of do a lot of video i do video um i'm not on youtube um ironically enough but okay. i do i do videos um well you're gonna be on youtube after this by the way well this is cool i'll be able to like <laughs> upload a video or two yeah. on that but i mean um i'm not afraid to be on video um and and to do it but a lot of agents are so what i've uh, done is that one of the things that i wish that i'd done last year that i'm doing now is that i've got a side hustle <laughs> from everything that i have been through i can't and believe you have time for this i do i i work all the time but i have a side hustle where i um i use all of my skills for social media graphic design, all of that stuff and workbooks and, and video marketing and um, social media and being a newbie agent and putting workbooks together and things like that, that mm -hmm. um, help agents be able to have like a timeline and be able to okay. set goals and have a strategy um, because you're pretty much put out there to wing it. And yes, absolutely. I don't, I don't think, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, before I forget is, I, you know, I don't think they have a plan. 
They no. don't know what they're doing today and they don't know what they're doing tomorrow or Thursday or Friday or whatever. There's no set uh, schedule. There's no a database, uh, uh, working a database. I'm, I'm shocked that some people, they, they don't keep a database at all. Uh, you can do that on something as easy as Excel spreadsheets, but a lot of them just get the license and they don't know where to go and what to do. And, and the brokers aren't offering these this great training because all they really, well, I don't want to paint with the big brush, but a lot of them just want your monthly dues. And if you sell something, that's a bonus for them, but they just want you in there to, to collect your monthly dues. So they don't know what, what to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I mean, we know exactly what we're doing Monday through Thursday. And then Friday, we're trying to work on getting, you know, pre-approvals wrapped up for people on the weekend. But we have a set schedule of what we do Monday through Thursday. And it, it's it's amazing to me that people don't don't have that. But that's very, very common. Right. And that's why I just felt that there was a need to be able to um, to put something like that out there and to provide yeah. um, some coaching and and just kind of elevate. So I'm trying to elevate you know, to a different level on um, being able to coach and mentor um, okay. agents and be able to give them, you know, guidance that I just didn't have. I do mean, you, do you sell some of that stuff on Etsy or how do you, how do you promote that, that side business that actually would help you and, and them, you know, in the long run? Well, I've got a website uh, being developed uh, right now, um, actually, okay. and it's called Big Mutt Media. <laughs> okay, I got to know where that came from. Big Mutt Media is where what it is, and big. Um, well, the funny thing is, I did a I did a can a marketing campaign for a property, and it was a new construction property, and I was they were wanting to do billboard advertising, uh-huh. and so I um I did this billboard sign, and it came from of course a '90s song, you know. But I won't mention that on this air. But, <laughs> but you get the picture when it says yeah, it's, it's, a, a ZZ Top song. No, not ZZ yeah. Top. It's more of a rap okay. song. And okay. uh, but I had a pic. I, I had a picture of my Saint Bernard puppy because I used to have a Saint Bernard at the time. I put a picture of my Saint Bernard puppy, and I'm big. It said, "I like big mutts." And turn here. Okay, I got you now. Right. And so yeah. I was like, okay, I'm a huge animal advocate. I, I'm a huge animal supporter. Um, I am uh, pretty much uh, go from vegetarian to vegan, vegetarian, vegan, vegetarian, what have yeah. you. But anyways, um, I needed something that really kind of expressed my my love for big, big mutts, big dogs, big mutts, yeah. what have you. And so media is the visual, you know, media that people can have. And so it'll be incorporating I've got probably over almost a hundred documents already prepped for it. Uh, Spreadsheets, financial spreadsheets, social media spreadsheets from Excel, Um, Canva. Gosh, I've I've designed tons of stuff in Canva. Um, So I have all this ready to go uh, that I'm about to launch. The reason I was asking was because there's a a nurse on, I just read it this week. She was a nurse and she uh, uh, started an Etsy page in business and uh, so she put her her notes from class on etsy to sell and uh-huh. she's made over a million dollars just selling her notes uh, you know to the classes that she took while she was becoming a nurse so yeah man you've got some uh, great opportunity uh with what you're doing yeah i mean i just i, I just want I, I love to help people um i i generally Every, everybody that I come in contact with or I work with or what have you, I mean, I am generally concerned that I am doing a good job for them, that they are comfortable, that they are, you know, good with everything. And so I find that I, I love to mentor people. I mean, I've always done that my entire career in 30 mm-hmm. years of property management. I was, a, I was a regional marketing director and trainer, actually. So it's like, um, that's my wheelhouse and that's what yeah. I love to do. And so I've just, taken all of the experience that I went through last year, um, which was brutal, um, trying to, trying to navigate through some of these agents. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, continue obviously selling real estate, 
but also be able to have this also to be able to put out there because I mean, people just don't realize just how serious be, being a real estate agent is. I yep. mean, they think you just go take 180 hours to get your you know license. Maybe you'll pass. Maybe you know it takes you five times to pass the exam. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you know the, the, our whole industry is governed by track, you know, and yep. all of that. So there, we've got an, a code of ethics that we've got to to abide by, and yep. we've got to have our game on, and we've got to have the knowledge. To, to know what we're doing and know how we're interacting with people. So we're doing the right thing and yeah. we're doing the right thing for people. And I think that people get into this business thinking they're just going to make a quick buck. Oh, my friend over here wants to sell her house or his house. Let me yeah. just go get my license and I can just do this. And it's just easy peasy. It's not. It's, it's not. amazing how fast you run out of friends that don't need to sell a house or buy a house. So. You know what? For all new agents that are listening to this, if you are new or, what, or, or whatever, your sphere of influence will not help you. <laughs> yeah. It okay. won't. It really, really won't. And it'll save you the heartache from expecting your father, mother, brother, sister, friend, or what have you. Why are they not using me? You know what? Don't, don't focus on that. You know, at the right. end of the day, just be who you are and, you know, be a nice person and be helpful and, you know, share, share your knowledge, share your joy, share and do your do what you say attitude. you're going to do. People will flock to you because of that. People will right. flock to you and continue to flock to you. I mean, it, it's just positive energy out there, you know, so, and, and yeah. don't get your feelings hurt if, if, if people don't use you yeah. at the end of the day, it's how you respond to it. You know, yeah, okay, yeah. I understand and I get it and it's not a problem, but in the future, if you feel like it's something, you know, I can help you, this is what I've got to offer, you know, you, then yeah. that's it. You got to show them what you can do for them, you know. Yeah, that's right. And you got to, so, you got to be able to educate the buyers and the sellers out there and, and, um, you and know. That's on top of staying on top of the market in general. Yeah. And, uh, so. So yeah. let me ask you uh, well, one question, another question. What What is one thing you you have always wanted to do, but you haven't done yet and for put, put it off for one reason or another, but you still have it as a dream that you want to get accomplished? Be, and then this, this can be either personal or business. Well, wow. I mean, um, I've got so many, so many side things I've done. I mean, I'm a, a choreographer. Um, I'm a fitness person. Uh, I, I was actually training to be a professional bodybuilder at one time. People don't know really? that. I'm also a certified makeup artist and I also do special effects makeup for making people look all crazy and weird. Yeah. Halloween. So come to you on Halloween to get uh, get all dressed up, huh? Yeah, I mean, they're they're of course. I'm sure there'll be this agent, this real estate agent uh, that that re that sees this or what have you. But um, a friend of mine, he was an agent at the time that sold me my house before I got doing real estate. Yeah. And uh, so he was going through. Um, he, he's a cancer survivor, and hopefully he doesn't mind me talking about a story. But anyways, he's got two twin boys. So he asked me to come over and uh, and do it do him scary for Halloween. So I uh, so we talked about it, and it's like he um, pretty much what I did was I blew his face off. He loves machine guns. <laughs> yeah. So I I created where the whole bottom half of his face is blown off. I mean, it's all tinted. Oh my gosh. Do you have pictures of it? I do. I do. Oh, um, I've got to see that on, on Facebook. Um, it's crazy. And uh, anyways, um, his boys, his twin boys that were, I think like seven or eight at the time came home and they were so scared so scared and just mortified and horrified that years later it's like wow. i see them and they're just and jeff's like do you do you remember this is holly she's the one that blew off my face or what have you he went yeah. to walmart and scared everybody in town oh um, my goodness 
scaring them like crazy. It was quite something. Um, okay, you got to send me those pictures. I would love to see those if, if you yeah. still still have them. So. so, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I, I've got, I'm very creative and I've got so many different interests that I can't ever just specifically settle on one because I'm very open-minded to creativity. So I love yeah. to write poems. I like to uh, dance. Uh, I've been in dance since I was three years old. So yeah. um, I love music. Um, hence my husband being a drummer. That's awesome. Is that uh, how y'all y'all met? Yeah, we met through the tribute scene, the music scene in Dallas, and uh, yeah. so um, and yeah, I mean, it's just uh, we wish that we could have met, um, you know, in our twenty years earlier. Right. I mean, yeah. it's bad when, but not bad, but you know, you're mid 40s early 40s mid 40s early 40s yeah when you're first meeting the love of your life um yeah. and it's like wow you know uh we, we just want to be able to like rewind back in the day because yeah. back in the day he was uh when he, he went to la he had long oh. hair he went to la trying to be in a band and me when i was a child and and teenager i wanted to be a soap opera actress and a choreo a dance choreographer Really? So I wanted to move to LA and do that. And so I um, remember thinking, gosh, you went to LA to be a musician. I wanted to go to LA to try to be an actress. Yeah, yeah. And and then, of course, what happened to me was that, you know, I needed to get an apartment. And the next thing you know, I got in the property management industry. And then there went my life, you know. Yeah. So, well, you know yeah. what? You you finally met and you know, I guess you, you may think, well, you know, we missed out on 20 years or whatever. I guess that makes you turn off the TV more and spend the time, extra time together. So you can make up for the time that you, you feel like you lost. But I mean, we love to be around each other and we're known as, you know, the Facebook couple, you know, some yeah. people go to shows and they're like, we see you on Facebook all the time, you know, yeah. and, I, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, my husband's really, really cool. <laughs> you know, so yeah. he's a cool no. dude. He's nice. I mean, he's super nice. And the band Desperado, I'm plugging Desperado, Eagles. Yeah. Um, all those guys are just really, really nice. So it's like, you know, it's it's better than seeing the Eagles live. I mean, if you've ever seen the Eagles live, you can almost yep. fall asleep. And well, don't bother. You could go see Desperado. We actually played in Katy. <laughs> Wow, you you have to let me know if he ever plays down down this way. And my brother yeah. lives up in uh, Roanoke, and if okay. I'm ever up there, I'll, I'll uh, reach out and see if uh, if your husband is is playing. I would love to to hear him. Yeah. We went out to uh, Cynthia Woods Pavilion in the Woodlands. A uh, few, my God, it's been about almost two years now, and uh, we got to see uh, Chicago, and that was just oh, amazing. Yeah. And uh, you know, wow. I, I love those cover bands and and the the bands that just played the favorites of mine the eagles was yeah. obviously a favorite of mine in the late 70s and 80s and um man that that would be uh that'd be cool to to go see so yeah. my final question i i told you 40 minutes would fly by and yeah. we're 43 minutes right now but i have my last question and and holly i would love to have you back on because i don't think that we even scratch the surface of, <laughs> of a lot of things that you could offer and share about your story. Yeah. Uh, so it's I would love to have you back on. on. Yeah. Um, and it, maybe I need to, I have another podcast and it's called inside Houston real estate. And a lot of times we'll have a guest and we'll shoot two uh, episodes back to back so we can keep them about 45 minutes, but, there is a lot of there's a lot of information that people need or they want to share and it takes more than a you know 20 minute conversation so we may yeah. have to uh, start doing that but i will ask you back if if you don't uh, don't mind no, so I love it. my my last question okay there is a young holly out there not that you're not young that's not the way that came out really bad there's another Holly out there that's just getting started in her career, whether it's in real estate or 
uh, an hourly or a salaried position and she's thinking about making that change to do something different like you did what would you what advice would you offer that young holly somebody that's wanting to do something different than real estate yeah let's just take it that way yeah well just to find you you've got to uh narrow down your skills and your talents and what you love to do so you take everything that you've done not only your entire life or you're young and so what are your passions what are your hobbies and what skill sets do you have and you can literally write those down and then start to drill down into each skill set um and figure out you know well what can i do with this so from the 90s for example for me in the 90s before the computers and before all these programs i mean i was working on a word processor and i was literally like in a typewriter but i was creating like flyers for my you know properties and stuff and doing all all of this all these graphic designs that i would literally go hand out to people you know mm -hmm. to hey, look at the property do this or i'd have events and i would create flyers for events and i had always done that but i've never done that as a sole business yeah and that's what that's like one of the things i did i drilled down and thought wow i mean what do i what do i really like to do well i like to create things i like to create banners and flyers and designs and, and social media posts so how can i take what i love to do and make money at it make money at it yeah you know yeah. and so easiest thing is you can look on Google and see what people are searching when you start to type in something and then you drill down you just got to find your niche and it could be several niches I mean but yeah. I mean anybody that's trying to look for a get rich quick scheme like a lot of these things are showing how I made a million dollars in you know four months it's a lie right <laughs> it's a lie, so it's a lie um, trying to get your money in uh, that you already have so yeah, I mean, it's hard, hard, hard work um, to do anything to be your own boss. Just like being yeah. a realtor is hard work and you've got to put in the work. And I think a lot of people don't think that they, they just try to not think, oh, how can I get, get to this point without having to put a lot of work? So a young Holly would be, you know, the advice is to make sure that you are set up, you know, for six months to a year to be able to either do straight commission but have a side hustle what other what other things do you love yeah. to do and make right. it happen that way you don't have to be yeah, a I, job I think the most important thing that you just said is you got to put in the work yeah you can't just expect it to happen so it can. good good answer good yeah. good answer and you don't have to be a corporate slave a slave to the corporate world if you want to put in the work to me if you're going to just go to your nine to five or because it's an easy paycheck that speaks volumes to me mm -hmm. you know the best people that have been out there and successful have been risk takers and they haven't always had all the money to That's do right. it but they find That's the way and they're resourceful and if you can find that one person that will mentor you and be an honest true person to help you that wants to help you and not just trying to get your money that's important too you know yeah. you gotta have that one person that that can believe in you and that's hard to find i've had three mentors in my life three wow well fantastic <laughs> what i too what this has been a uh a very good interview and and i man i can't thank you enough for coming on holly and we'll definitely uh have you back if Thanks. uh if you don't mind uh doing that you can just you can uh, just coach all of us and uh, maybe even bring your rock star husband next time. He he can uh, get on here and and uh, sell his business as well. So yeah, thank you so much. He's a, he's a cutie. It's like there. Yeah. Oh, uh, there we go. That's there a house to lose. Oh man. Well, yeah, well, Holly, why don't you uh, why don't you yeah. uh, let us know how we would get in touch with you? If, uh, if we need to get in touch with you, uh, email, phone number, you have their, your uh, number uh, scrolling cr yes. across the bottom, but go ahead and give it out in case anybody is watching or listening to this on the podcast, they won't see what's scrolling uh, across. So so make sure you, you give that. And if there is an email, 
uh, or a different way to get in touch with you, go ahead and uh, give us that information. Well, I am on Facebook and Instagram as uh, Explore Living Dallas, um, but also Holly Biddick Realtor, but mainly Explore Living Dallas on Facebook and Instagram. And then um, email, super easy, Holly Biddick at Outlook. Uh, dot com and uh but yeah definitely that's where you can always find me is on social media so yeah. um and instagram is is the place and so um but i have a youtube channel for explore living dallas i just haven't posted a whole lot on it yet but uh, okay. Okay. but yeah definitely um explore living dallas and uh that's that's where you can find all all of my stuff so. are you also on uh, linkedin I am on LinkedIn as uh, okay. Holly Biddick Realtor. Yeah. Okay. Great. Holly, or Holly Biddick. Yes. I'm okay. on LinkedIn and, uh, um, but yeah, I mainly, I mainly function through Instagram and okay. my Facebook page. Um, and my Facebook page is really all about also, about a, I help promote other things that are going on in the area as well. It's more informative than trying to like, be salesy and yeah. just say, buy a house from me, you know, and this is what the market's doing right now. Every now and then it has something like that, but it's more so about, you know, living in Dallas or living in the life, the lifestyle, you know, and what it's like to just live in the area in, in general. That, and if I can help you, fantastic. That right. is so, so smart. I've got a, a living in Cyprus uh, uh, Facebook page and yeah, I, I don't like the down your throat stuff. Just, you know, always trying to sell me, just, just give me information about the area. Yeah. And when I need you, I'll remember what you did. And so uh, that, yeah. that's a great, great strategy right there. So yeah. that, that's another, maybe even a third uh, broadcast, Holly. So, but thank you so much. I, I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate All right. you. Well, okay. You guys, I'm, I'm Mark Zachary with uh, Next Step Home Loans. I am a broker and owner of Next Step. And uh, we do financing all over the state of Texas. I've been doing this 28 years, so I've helped a lot of people, you know, through this process. So if you need help on or if you have questions like with Holly for the real estate, if you have it on, on the mortgage side, information is free where I come from. So give me a call. My number is 832-504-9014. Or you can go to our website at Next Step Home Loans. Dot com. But otherwise, we will see you next week on, on our podcast. And I, I just, uh, man, I, I have so much fun doing this. But Real Estate Pros of Houston, we'll see you next week. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.